Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia, and I am the project and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful, respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will share the link in the chat for our channel. And if you've not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to interact and access the chat. Um, you can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. And we are back for week three of the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. Um, as usual, I will play a quick word from our speaker, Bruno, prior to beginning the session. Hello, friends. My name is Bruno Capuano. I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I want to welcome you to the Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp. I'm a Latin person in my, in my 40s. I am in my office today. I am wearing a Reactor Black T-shirt. And again, I'm so, so happy to be with you in these five-week programs. We are going to try to help everyone who want to get the PL900 certification. And hey, this is also going to be super fun. The idea of the bootcamp is to help you to get prepared to pass the PL900 exam. And the PL900 is an amazing certification, which basically helps people who are in that, in that path to get a better understanding of the Power Platform uh, and the tools that we have in the Power Platform. An example, if you want to automate the process, how you can use Power Automate for that. If you want to get more insights about your data, you can use Power BI. The whole idea of the plot of this bootcamp is to, get, is to help you to get prepared for this certification. PL900 is a great certification. And hey, because there are changes going on in the Power Platform, this exam is going to be, they're going to be, we are going to have a new version just at the end of the bootcamp. We are going to add extra sessions to cover those changes when we arrive at the end of September. Also, there is important that you need to know that there is a study guide that you can download for free. You can get and have a chance to review the sample questions. And there are two ways that you get can get prepared for this exam. You can get an instructor, let paid course. You can pay for an instructor. You can pay for a course to get prepared. And the other one is the free version, which is use one of the Microsoft Learn learning path. And this is going to be our main focus during this bootcamp. And let's also quickly talk about the learning path, the PL900 Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals. As you can see on the main page, there are no requisites. You can get here clean and start to learn. This learning path uh, includes 10 modules. These 10 modules are focused in a general uh, introduction to the Power Platform, how you can use uh, Power Apps, introduction to Power Apps, how you can build a Canvas app, there are so many amazing information here. During this bootcamp, we are going to review these modules. We are going to learn together and we are going to get specific insights in each one of them. So you can remember, you can get better knowledge about the Power Platform. And this is how the bootcamp is going to work. Remember, we talk about that the learning path includes 10 modules. And the idea for this bootcamp is each week we are going to cover two modules and we are also going to have community hours, office hours to talk about this. So we are going to spend 10 weeks all together. You can take a look at the full agenda and have all of the dates and the links in our main Power Platform Bootcamp page and also the links to the community hours meetings. And important, the idea is that every week on Monday and Tuesday, we are going to review a module and then we are going to have community hours of 30 minutes on Wednesday to basically talk, network, 
get to know each one better and also to answer a specific question that you may have around the exam or the modules. Also, important to note, all of the modules review session are going to be recorded. You can come back, you can review, you can take a look in the Reactor YouTube channel and watch again the module recording. And also, the community hours are not going to be recorded. I, we want this to be an office, an, an open, and a super safe space so everybody can ask questions. So we are not going to record that, but we are going to be open to host more community hours if needed. So again, please take a look at the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals Bootcamp page where you are going, where you're going to have links to each of all of the sessions. You're going to see the dates and the time for everything. And hey, feel free to contact us if you have any more questions. And that's it. This is a super quick intro that you probably noticed I recorded to Don. So I don't need to do this every time during these 10 sessions. And Let's start. Let's start with the bootcamp. I'm so happy to be here and I hope that you enjoy and learn a lot with us during these five amazing weeks. So here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hey, Vincent. Hey, everyone. Just got you. Didn't have the time to add you into the video, but hey, it's so nice to see people joining from a lot of places. Please, listen. Please let, let us know where you join in this. And as usual, let's start with a couple of house cleaning rules. Join, you know, the, we share the link of the, of the agenda of the main, pla the, the main places. Uh, Bilal from Pakistan, uh, super cool. And uh, Copenhagen, oh my God, there's lots of people from everywhere. But going back to the content, uh, join the Cloud Skill Challenge that we have, where you are going to see all of the modules, you're going to see everything. As we start, as we start, let's start as usual with a couple, with a quick, 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 uh, five minutes, 10 minutes overview and question from yesterday. So let me share the Kahoot from yesterday. And this is how it works. You need to navigate kahoot.it. And when you are there, you enter this pin, 83129. 11 or scan the QR code and this is what you are going to use to, to basically uh, have a quick review and we are going to overview the, the stuff that we did yesterday. So remember kahoot.it and then 831, 831, 11 to join. So I have six people here, super cool. Bruno's haircut, yes, I know, I have a haircut. It was, uh, I will probably share a photo of my kid. He has a very long Afro head. I have a very curly hair, but yeah, and someone is <laughs> smiling. I have Bruno's haircut. I need to take a, a screenshot of this one, but hey, this is kind of the idea. And I, will, I see a lot of people also here from Lagos, from UK. Uh, super cool, super amazing. And uh, we are 30 people here. I will wait until we have at least 20. Kahoot.it and then the, the game pin. And then we are going to start. Uh, Bjorn, S, Denise, Maria, uh, Good Team, Awesome. I like also <laughs> AH, My G, haha, Bruno's Garcos. Everyone is here. So let's start. Today is going to be a fast lesson. Uh, so I want to take advantage of the time. You can join later if you want, but let's start with the first question. And remember, these questions came to from the module, the learning path, and also from the students. And some of these questions may or may not be the certification. They are probably going to be similar. So let's take at this. So what resources we can you can use to, uh, to, to, to do the administration of the Power Automate? Uh, answer number one, Download the Power Automate administrator application. Number two is Power Automate is only administered via the web portal. And number three, Power Automate can be administered on the web via PowerShell or by building flows. We talked a little about this one uh, yesterday. I haven't shown much, but there is a specific role uh, that usually is in charge of doing the administration here. And hey, let's take a look at what you think. I am going to be, hey, Wayne is here also from New York. 
I'm going to be super honest here. There is no power automate administration application, so discard that one. And remember what we've seen in the last two weeks or three with this one. Everything that we did, everything that we are doing right now is web-based. So just give you a hint to the answer here. There it is. So yes, uh, you can do web, but, but, but you can also do dev and IT stuff like PowerShell or Building Blocks. You can even create Power Automate to administer and create other Power Automate. That's kind of a tricky one. And I was completely sure it was only the web portal. So sorry about that. But let's remember this, that you have also access to PowerShell or Building Blocks. If you don't know, if you're not a developer, if you're not a programmer, just learn this by memory. And remember, you can use the portal, but you can also use external tools to do the administration. Okay. Something good. So no points. Kudos to everyone. Let's move forward. Second question. Where do you, feel, where do you find flow templates? You have to build and save the templates by yourself. There are no pre-built templates. You can find the flow templates, the Power Automate templates directly from the Power Automate Builder website. Or you need to download the template pack from the Microsoft Learn website. So what do you see? We created a couple of Power Automate flows yesterday uh, from templates, but I don't know if you remember how we do this or if you are working or playing around with Power Automate, you probably know right now that how this works. So you want to create a new one and where there are the templates and how do you find the templates? Ten more seconds. And if you just join, remember, you can join the Kahoot. Just navigate to Kahoot.it and the game pin is A312911. Yes, everyone, almost everyone got this one right. It's directly from the Power Automate Builder website. When you create a new one, there are the templates and you can even submit templates if you want. And Microsoft will approve that. I can't remember who is going to approve them and add them to the tool, but everything is in the website. So super cool. Kudos to everyone. Move to the third one. How can data sources be using Power Automate? Uh, Power Automate, answer number one, Power Automate can only connect to Microsoft data sources such Office 365 and Azure, only Microsoft. We talk about this. The connectors allow us to connect to a lot of stuff. The second answer is Power Automate requires you to build custom connectors to access external data. And the third one is Power Automate can connect to data sources using one of the plus 600 previous connectors or by building your own custom connector. So I think I talk about this plenty of time, how amazing are the connectors, and even show yesterday how we can use Twilio to send SMS uh, with external connectors. So just give away the, the answer for this one. But remember, and we don't show this, if you want, we can add this to the session on Wednesday. You can create your own custom connectors that need to run in the machine. It's going to be available only for you. But if you need to connect a specific application, you can do this. So yes, a Power Automate can connect with a lot, with a lot of stuff. Not only Microsoft, of course, there are several connectors to do activities with Office 365, with SharePoint, with Active Directory, with Azure. But we also have plenty of third party connectors to work with Salesforce, with Slack, with Google Drive, with Gmail. There are the connectors ecosystem is super amazing. So thanks about that. Bruno Herzgott is <laughs> have a streak of three answers in a row. Kudos for you. Let's move forward. So next one, maybe I do the no camera here. So hey, let's complete this one. Uh, okay, which type of policies help prevent protect organizational data from unintended exposure in Power Automate? We talk about this the day one. And this is a tricky one uh, because if you are not in the topic, the names are very similar. So we have business only data, common data service, data management, or DLP, data loss prevention. Uh, but in the first module, in the first module, when we talk about this, we mentioned this and we mentioned about the policies. So this is just basically knowing the right name. Let me have my answer here. Le, knowing the right name, 
uh, just to give you a hint, the common data service is not that one. Uh, there are no common data service policies. The policy applies uh, globally, but it's something that is probably going to be in the exam, so this is a nice one to memorize. So yes, DLP is the answer. And I know that when I say the right answers, probably not very good playing Joker, uh, poker, I'm sorry, because I will probably give away the answer. But yes, DLP is the answer. The data loss prevention policies are the one that help us in the power automates and also in the, in the platform to, to keep our information secure there. Moving forward, hey, name nine players has a streak of three. Kudos to all of them. And a quick one, two or four. Can AI Builder uh, be trained train models to be using Power Automate we have without having access to Dataverse? I quickly showed one yesterday. And uh, remember, AI Builder is one of the tools that we have as part of the, in the Power Platform where we can train models to detect objects. We can use pre-trained models to understand text and get the language of the text. And we can even uh, train our own models and do more, read invoices and do plenty of other stuff. But when we use this, we need to have access to the dataverse, two or false. I hope I didn't give away the answer in this one. And also, as a non-English speaker, I really don't like this question when you are basically negating something. Can A do something without doing A? I like direct questions. So think about this one. It's a good one. And the question is, false, you need to have access to the database. So because it's running there, it's using information that's already stored there. And when you train a model, an example for object detection, you need to store these images in, in, in a place, that's a dataverse. So remember, everything that we are doing with the data uh, with AI Builder must use dataverse. That's the, the rule there. So seven players, the three. And the last one, which trigger can be used to invoke Power Automate flow from JavaScript? So we have a flow. Remember that we have triggers. Triggers are activities, are actions that will trigger the flow. Like an example, press a button in a power app, get a new email, a new document in SharePoint. But there is a specific way also to, to trigger a flow that we can use uh, from JavaScript or from external sources. So this is a little tricky if you are not a developer, but this may or may be not part of the the exam. So the four options that we have here is send an HTTP request to SharePoint. Uh, the second one is when an HTTP request is received. Third one is invoke an HTTP request. And the last one is get a web resource. So again, this is a tricky one, but this is a way that we can do and we can create solutions and we can integrate the flow directly from using code like JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, etc. So the answer here is HTTP request. So the idea is that we can create a flow. We can use this trigger, HTTP request trigger, and this will create a URL, like www.ra, a big URL that we can use later in our applications to invoke the flow. So this is super cool if you want to do uh, cool stuff like create a for flow and then use your flow uh, from your website using JavaScript or from your internal apps or from every place. So that's it. So let's move to today. Kudos to everyone. Let's move to today's module, which is how we are going to build an automated solution, automated solution. So the idea is that as we talk uh, here, uh, there are several ways that we can create a flow. We can create a flow from a template. It's all about Power Automate today. Uh, and then we can do plenty of stuff. Uh, like creating from scratch. Let me go back here and open Power Automate. When we are in Power Automate, let's close this one. We can go here, create a new one, and we have the templates here. So plenty of stuff, plenty of templates that we have. Each one of the templates has also, let me open Zoom it, has also here, the icons of the connectors that we are using. So we're using uh, Dynamics, we're using Teams, sorry, 
of Office 365 teams and planner. And if we start to see other ones, all templates, we can even start to see here, like this one, which use Twitter, and then do sentiment analysis to analyze Twitter, then sentiment analysis, and then save everything to a Power BI data set to create a, char a chart. So there are plenty of templates here, which are very interesting. We are going to create a new one. But the, when we start to see the templates, we, and when we use the template, the next step will be, OK, let's give permissions or activate the connection to a specific services that we need to use. And one which is super, super popular is to create a flow. The template is here to save my office attachments to OneDrive for Business or save my Gmail emails with attachments to Google Drive or mix something, Gmail attachment to OneDrive or OneDrive for Business. There are plenty of one that you can do, but this is the main part. There are everyone, every time that we create a power uh, a flow, we have here two main parts, a trigger and one or more actions. And the trigger is a starting part. The trigger is a new email, uh, this web that we can create, or even a button. And uh, the actions are where we define the flow. So there are plenty of ways that we can do this. I love this definition of trigger when something changes, a new item, a new, item, a new document in SharePoint, a document changes on a schedule, on a button press. And let's talk about these two, which are not very popular here. So let's go and create a, a new template from scratch. Uh, so there are a couple of, when we start from a blank template, we can create an automate, automated cloud template, an instant cloud, or a scheduled cloud. And a scheduled cloud will be basically run, uh, let's run this every day at 10 a.m. starting today, and let's do send email invoices reminder. So I will create this flow name. And this is the important part. I'm going to define kind of the trigger that is going to be running every day at 10 a.m., repeating every one day. I can do more here, like an example can be run every couple of seconds or every monthly or every two days or every week. Let's leave it like this and let's create the flow. So the idea here, what I want to create is this is going to run every day, 10 a.m., sending emails. And let's do a quick one. I see Oscar from Winnipeg. Uh, hey, Oscar. Uh, I want to, to do something here. I want to read a list of emails and send this. And by the way, once I create the, the flow, I can also get here and I start to see the interval. And I have more information here, like the start time at these hours, at these minutes. So there are plenty of things if I want to change something here. So let's create here a list of emails. So I am in SharePoint. Let's create a list, a blank list. I am going to create here invoice preview. Super simple list. And what I am going to do basically is create a list that is going to have a, a column. Let's add a single line column of text that's going to be email. If you were email, oh, sorry about that. And this is my list. And let me get a couple of emails here. So I am going to send an email. I am going to start to add here element. So I'm going to add a new element. And I'm going to see here. It's going to be Adele. And the email is going to be this one. Okay. So I'm going to add Adele. And I am also going to add, I have someone here, Miriam. So let's create a new item here. Miriam, if someone wants to win the list, share your email if you want, and I will add you here. But Super simple here. I have a very small SharePoint list with a title. This is probably not going to be title, uh, column settings, rename. Let's do reviewer name. And I also have reviewer email. And this is just simple. This is just for testing. Once I have this, 
I am going to go back to my flow. There is my flow. Let's minimize this. And by the way, let me know if you can read this or I need to zoom in or zoom out. And let's add an action here, an operation that is going to give me access to, to the items in SharePoint. So let's do SharePoint, this. And here in SharePoint, I have a couple of triggers. Remember, we have triggers and action. If I want to start a flow, I have triggers like an example when an item is created, when an item is modified, when a file is created in the folder, etc. My trigger will be a calendar. So what I have here is some actions. So I can add an attachment, I can approve something. I have plenty of stuff, create stuff. So get files, get items. I, am, I want to get items from Shadow. So because I'm working with SharePoint and this action is created to work with SharePoint, I will have access to specific SharePoint information, and specific SharePoint stuff. So let's pick up the retail sites from SharePoint. Let's pick up the list, invoice reviewers, and I can limit here the entries to a folder. So it gets only one, gets only two, gets only 20. That's it. I don't want to do this. I just want to have everything that we have here. And in the meantime, in the meantime, I will show you something. And Hey, I will have my items here. And remember, this is going to be run every time, every morning at 10 a.m. So, but the next thing that I want to do, I want to send an email. So I'm going to go to Office 365 Outlook. Let's use this one. Got it? Yes. And send an email, B2. Can't remember why we have a B2 here. And this is important. When I click into here, I can start to add, and let me zoom out a little here so I can show the, the stuff. Uh, let's minimize this. I can start to add here in dynamic content. You can see here that I have a viewer email created by email, modified by email. I have the information that is defined in the list. So if I click on reviewer email, this will automatically, and this is important, it was fast, so I hope that you got it. It will automatically, because I am working with the collection, create a for each. It will iterate for each one of the values. And then in each one of the values from the SharePoint list is going to apply the send email. So I have here a reviewer email and the subject. Remember, you need to check your invoices. And in the body of the email, let's add a happy face. And that's it. That's my very simple, let's say this, a very, very simple uh, flow checker. Uh, yes, I know. So we have here uh, all data filter queries. We are not going to filter. It's good enough with this. But I have my, I have this running. I have this way to run. And, hey, it's going to. The first time is going to be is going to run is going to be tomorrow at 10 a.m. But I can test this one if I want here manually. I can test this, and yes, it's going to run a flow. So uh, it's already done. The flow runs successfully. So I have here. It fakes the the start at 10 a.m. It gets all of the items. It did it for each. We can see here that we have one of two and send two emails, one for Adele and one for Miriam. If I go here and open Outlook in example, I should get, I should have the email right now. Here it is. Remember, you need to check your invoices. And hey, if I open also Miriam's profile, let's go to Miriam. This is Miriam and Outlook. I have here the email that you need to check your invoices. Super simple email, super simple flow, but we created something from scratch. And of course, this is not uh, the way that remember people that they need to do something. There are better ways, but I want to just give you a hint of how you can do this. If I add a new one, a new person here, uh, I think I have Alex here also. Let me copy Alex's email. Yeah, I add Alex. And I have Alex email, there it is, it's Alex. And I can go back here to, to the to the 
to the flow and I can test the flow. I can remember if I have test here, no. I need to edit, uh, no, run the flow. Here it is, run flow, done. And going back to Adele, Adele should have the new email anytime soon, there it is. These are the two emails. And same with Miriam. Miriam has the two emails here. But super simple scenario about hey, how you can how you can create something connecting with the SharePoint list and triggering by a recurrence. Remember that we talk about that we have recurrence that we can define that they run this every Monday morning, run this every day at 10 a.m. But what happened if I delete the trigger? So the trigger is delete. I delete everything. When you delete the trigger, is delete everything. And I want to add, remember that we as I told you that we have on button press. So we have this one. What, so what is this? So we can create, we can create triggers. I'm sorry, we can create a, a flow that is going to be triggered by a button a, when that is going to be a, <clears throat> that is going to be triggered when you have here basically the app installed in your mobile, Android or iPhone. Uh, you are going to be to have access to to the to the app, and you can trigger the the, the the flow. So I just changed this, and by the way, I can add inputs when I talk the button. But let me see if I can show you. And this is always trigger. Remember, this is the moment that I hate when it's not working. But let me open my phone and show you. I have a plan B here, just in case and show you my how this is looked. So it's selecting the device, there it is. So what you are going to see right now is this is the, the app. This is the, the power app running here. I'm working with, with Adele. So this is Adele, the, the demo that we have. And we can see here uh, a lot, a lot of cloud flows that I am running right now. So I just created this one, send email invoices reminder. And as you see here, let me move here. As you see here also in the bottom, I have flows, I have buttons, and I have approvals. If someone sends an approval for me, I can do the approval step here. If I go to buttons, I am clicking buttons here right now. I am going to see, uh, by the way, this is my phone. This is what you see here. Uh, I have here the invoice reminder. So let me move this one here. Let me open here the Outlook and go back this one. If I click on this one, I, uh, I have the chance to run the flow. And hey, this is going to the flow was run successfully. And we will see that we have a new email anytime soon. This is a super cool question. Uh, Audio is asking what app I am running on your phone to get flow information. This is the official Microsoft Power Automate flow. If you go to uh, Google Store Power Automate, an example, uh, this is the one. This is the official, the same with the, with the Apple Store, and this is the one that you need to install to, to have it there. And then when you Authenticate yourself with your account, you will have access to, to this one. So an example, as I show right now here uh, in buttons flow, I'm still here in the in the buttons flow. In the uh, let's see if I can show it bigger. In the button flow, I only have this. But if I create a new one, if I go here, create a new one for button. This is going to show me all of the templates with button. I like this one. This is a popular one, but I really, really like this. It's going to basically send a reminder, a reminder to myself in 10 minutes. So let's click this one. It's going to show me, OK, what I am going to use, a button feature, a timer, and notification. And it's going to connect to the notification feature. So let's create the flow. There it is, it's created, it's had and run this. So if I go back to my phone, this is my phone, and I refresh this, refresh, 
in the top, I should have both of them. So I have the new one here. I have to send myself a reminder in 10 minutes. I will click on this one, run flow, and there it is. It will send a reminder in 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, I will have here notifications, like the one that I have here on top. So this is everything that I have. But in 10 minutes, I will have a reminder in my phone that, hey, this is happening. And remember, and this is also interesting, that when I have my flows, sorry, when I have my flows here in the same invoice uh, reminder, the trigger is the button, and the button is kind of uh, super important, but I can add fields here. So I can manually trigger a button and I can add an input here. So in example, I can add fields from text, yes, no, file, email, number, or date. So let us test here. Let's do this custom message, please enter your input, and then add here a yes, no. Uh, end of day. I will simulate this. When I have this, these two, these two elements, what I can do, these two variables here, I know flow checker, I know. I can start to use them here. So an example in the Apply for each here, when I am sending the email, I can go here to my invoices and in the bottom right corner, uh, in the bottom right corner, I will have somewhere here at the bottom, this is the information that I have available from the button. I have the username, so to know who triggered this. So let's add here. Sorry about that. I have here uh, this information. Uh, who triggered this? Oh, it's not here. And I can add an example the because the the button is going to be triggered by a. Uh, by a mobile phone. This mobile phone is going to give access to the application to the location. So I, you can have here country or region. So you know where it was this one uh, trigger. And then you have here access to uh, a custom message. This is the one that I created, I think so. So I can go here and review our email and do the custom country region and message. Oops, sorry, let me change this to English. There it is. Message and let's add here custom message. So I am going to add this information to the to the. So I'm going to save this. It's saving. Once it's saved, I can go back to my phone. Let's leave here the email so we can take a look. Just in case, let me delete this one. So we only see the new ones. So let me go back to my phone. I am going to refresh this. And now when I am going to Mateo said similar to not 32, not really sure. Uh, and hey, that this is a super good question. Can we get the history of a flow running for a day with something like five pace or how much time it took? Yes. Uh, let me show you quickly here in the flow. If I go back here, uh, I have here the all runs. Uh, this is basically this flow. This is that for today. Super simple. 10 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago, or 10 minutes ago, or whatever. And you have here the status. And you can even see that this was success, this was success, and this also success, but this was triggering by test mode. And you can have also, you can have also all of the all of this info available to get to support as a CSV. So if you want to add this into your own reporting system, it's going to be there. But yes. You can track all of this. So going back to the phone, now that I add these, these elements, when I click the phone, take a look at this. Because I am going to request the country, it's going to ask me to enable the, the location. So there it is, I enable the location. And then it's going to ask me for custom message, hello. Hello. Um, reactor, and then I am going to have here end of day, yes, just to have something. I am going to run the flow, and uh, sorry about the typo there, but its trigger is there, and what it's going to do right now is, hey, take a look at this. 
It sends the message, it knows that I am in Canada right now because I am triggering this from my mobile phone, remember here, my mobile phone here. Uh, no, this is not an emulator. This is the real phone. If you want, we can, let me show you, let me change the layout. Yeah. It's not an, oh, sorry. This is not an emulator, this is my phone. If I click on this one, you will see here my, my phone, my button. Sorry if I have a, a sorry if I have a where it, notification. So I type this, sorry if I have a weird notification. And if I press the, the from flow button, we will have an email. There is the email right there. Where you can see, let me zoom this a little to see. Oh, too much, too much. Little sorry if I have a weird notification. So no, this is not an emulator. This is my real phone with the app installed using this account. But it was super important for me to show to, to show today how you can uh, create a full solution with this. And I have another one here. So let me go here. I have another one which is going to post items to Twitter after an approval. So sorry about that. This one is going to read another list that we have here. And you can see the step by step to create this one here. So you have new tweet labs, new tweet lab two. And the flow is going to every time that a new item is created in that list, it's going to start an approval process. that is going to be assigned to, my, to Miriam. And then when the item is approved, it's going to send it a, a tweet. It's going to tweet about this and update the item with the with approval message, or it's going to update the item with the rejected message. So this is up and running. And if I go here and create a new one, a new title, like an example, app three and uh, hey. The power platform is already at 50%, uh, over 50%. It's over 50%. I can start to do this. I can say this. Just in case, let me also open Twitter. And I think this user is PL900. Oh, sorry, I need a zero here. So this is the account that is available for this. I have, you can see last tweet one. So if I create this item, this item will trigger the flow. And you are going to see here at any moment that the flow has a new one. And then also Miriam will have the, the chance to approve or delete uh, or reject this item. And this is kind of a nice one because you want to tweet something Imagine that you are in a corporate site, and before uh, I see a couple of questions from Matejo about Bluemix and Sublime Text. Not the focus of this. We are focusing on low code mostly here. And as I said, we are going to see here, this is the run, the, the flow that we just triggered seven seconds ago, where we have the item. And if we go back to Miriam emails, Miriam will get a, a notification here, there it is, to approve this. So if I approve the item, if I approve the tweet, yes, it is okay with corporate policies. Sorry, uh, and we submit this. Uh, this is going to be <coughs> this is going to be part of the, the stuff that we have here. So the flow ran successfully, it's finished here, and we see that it went on the yes direction. If we go back here to the retail, to the list here, we are going to see that it's updated with the info that we just did. And also in Adele's way, if we refresh her profile, this is going to be, hey, the Power Platform Bootcamp is already over the 50% there. Sri, Sri Banka asked a very good question. So when we are going to use Flow and when we are going to use Power Automate Desktop? 
If you want, tomorrow we can do a demo of Power Automate Desktop, uh, or I can show a video because I, I am afraid that if I run Power Automate Desktop, I may lose access to share the screen. But Power Automate Desktop is to basically automate users. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you can see this. No, because it doesn't show. Uh, it's not showing the let me change here the camera. But I just get my flow reminder here. Reminder from Power Automate. Focus, focus. Sorry. But this is a 10 minute reminder that I have here, which is kind of nice to, to run. And going back to your question, uh, Power Automate Desktop is. Yes, we're going to have a session of Automate Desktop where we can show more, but Power Automate is due. And let's see if I can show a real life one tomorrow. Okay, so as I said, the one that I just showed, uh, recording flows, you will have here the chance to create your own if you going back to the module, if you are following the module. So you are going to have here the, the options. You are going to see the specific options. We are also going to, to see how to use specific items that you have here, actions, I'm sorry, like the Compose. The Compose is basically you have items, like an array of items, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can compose this, you can concatenate also. There are plenty of stuff that you can do here with this. And then in the module, we also have the chance that, hey, you can build a button flow. You can build a, a flow that is going to be triggered by a button. Like the one that we just created, super cool. And uh, hey, here it is. Send myself a reminder uh, in 10 minutes. Get today weather forecast for my current location. This use an external service. This is the weather channel or a weather service. I can't remember which one. But there are plenty of things that you can do with, uh, with location. Imagine that you have someone working on the field and they want to trigger every, they want to save information every time that they arrive to a client office or to, a, I don't know, to an office somewhere, they can have a button, click a button, we automatically get the location, we automatically get the time. You can save this in a sharpened list or in Dynamics or in Salesforce or whatever to say, hey, I am here at this time, I am there at this time. You can also check the button if you are near to a location, do some activity. So if I check a button, and with a recurrent activity for one hour, and every five minutes I check my location, I can do, I don't know, if I am traveling in my train from A to B, when I am close to B, I can check this and, and see. So there are plenty of stuff that you can do. Take a look at the module, take a look at what it has here. It's also showing here one of the cool features that we have, actions that we have, which is delay. Run a, a flow, but at some moment, make a delay. And then there it is. Let's go here. Then we have this one, which is the list of twists. This is the one that I just showed you. We have a list of twists, and we have the step-by-step. -step. Someone was asking about labs yesterday, so this is literally a lab that you can do that is going to help you to create a list on SharePoint, to create the approval flow, which is already created and pre-populated, and then the steps that you can customize and change them. And there are plenty, plenty of activities. There are plenty of things that you can do. And I really, really think that working with working with Power Automate, it's kind of, as I said yesterday, it's probably my preferred tool here because it's super powerful. Also, you have it in your phone and you can do plenty, plenty of stuff. So this is it for today. I want to do, I don't want to do more. Here it is. After you finish this one, you are in the checkpoints. I'm sorry. You're in the knowledge check, sorry. And if you have any questions tomorrow in the in the community hours, we are going to I am going to quickly review and share again the way that you can create a demo template. So you a demo tenant, so you can try everything. I am going to share quickly also the ways that you can have access to vouchers. And as uh, Srinivas, sorry if I say your name, but requested, I am going to do a quick demo of Power Automate Desktop. desktop. Anything else, please join us tomorrow. Uh, uh, this is super cool. I really, really like it. And hey, we can even have this one like send me a push notification with my current location. If you enable this one, let me do a quick demo of this one. Create flow. Srini, perfect, thanks. <laughs> I will call you. 
uh, it's it's already there and I go back to my phone I refresh my my buttons so this is my current location from the flow and a couple of seconds here is oh you don't see oh it's a full address with my address no I am not going to show you this sorry about that I was hoping to only show let me edit this a little I don't want to show streets and a <laughs> number, but it's super accurate. So full address. No, I don't want full address. Let's do something else. Country, city, and state. I think this is good enough. Let me go here. And how do I clean these ones? I can't. I can't show this without moving this. I'm sorry, I don't want to share my my full address here, but you get the idea of what we can do with this. That said, remember, please uh, let me share this. Please, if you have time, go to this link. Go to the event ID code that we have. Give us feedback. We really want to know what can we do better. What do you want to hear? What do you want to listen? We have more stuff here. To, to share and hey, see you all tomorrow. It was a pleasure and we are close to the final two weeks. So goodbye everyone.